Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joey from awesomecameras.com and we are back here in Venice Beach. Uh, we just want to do a quick little video. Derek and I are going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison of Impossible Project Spectra film and Instax Wide. We got a Polaroid Spectra system here. We're going to be shooting the Spectra film on that and uh, just a regular Instax 210, Instax Wide. Uh, basically, we're just going to go around shoot some photos, but we're going to do the exact same photo on both cameras so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Stereophonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound impossible to obtain in a monolo recording.
All right, so we got the photos all scanned in and put them up side by side. And I mean, I really like them all. Fuji, I guess, would be the clear winner here. Um, just accuracy of photos. I just wish that Fuji did make a better camera. Um, the Impossible Project, uh, I kind of knew what I was expecting. That being said, still kind of disappointed, as always. Uh, I do, I love it at the same, I have a love-hate thing with Impossible Project, as I'm sure many of you do. But it's just always so frustrating that there's always streaking. I feel like I've never had a pack that doesn't have streaking. Um, and I was just thinking just the other day, I was looking at photos that I took, you know, four years ago. And they're almost completely faded, like completely gone. Uh, and I'm just, you know, it's hard to justify shooting impossible because of that. I'm like, oh, is this going to be around in four years? What if I want to show my kids one day some photos that I took on this film? Is it going to be around? I don't know. Uh, so that is kind of frustrating. That being said, they do have a cool look uh, on the impossible side. But with Fuji, I just feel like it's just a much better product. Much more consistent, obviously. Um and just the colors are more accurate, less fading, no streaking on the Fuji. Um, I think you gotta really leave some Instax out in the sun probably for a few weeks uh, before it starts getting real messed up and starts streaking on you. As I'm filming this, uh, Derek is in Michigan, so we haven't really had a chance to discuss it. So let's go over to Derek and see what he has to say. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, like Joey said, I'm over in Michigan, so I couldn't be in the studio with him, but I still wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the film that we shot. Um, I really, really like instant like photography. I think it's so cool to be able to take a picture and then have a like tangible, holdable print like right after. And for that, I think both of these films are really cool because you can do that. That being said, Joey kind of explained my thoughts uh, with the impossible film I feel the same way I don't want to be harsh but it's really bad like I I've wasted a lot of money on that film in the last like four years I probably shot seven eight maybe more packs of it and I just am not happy with the, the the photos that I've gotten they look cool you know right when they come out of the camera or 30 minutes after they develop out of the camera but a month two months three months you start to see them fade and all the photos that I've taken on that film honestly from like three years ago. Some of it, you can't even see the people in the picture anymore. And it's just, I don't know, it feels like a waste of money because I want something that when I have it, like I get to hold on to it for at least like, let's say five to 10 years. And the Fuji Instax photos that I've taken, I've been shooting that film for let's say maybe five years. And the ones that I took at the beginning, they look just as good as the ones that they're coming out of the camera now. Great observation, Derek. And also, like Joey said, I do think that it'd be cool to see Fuji make some better cameras for the Instax. It feels very like prosumer right now, and I do agree that there are a lot better options as far as the cameras that Polaroid was making. Yup. Yup. Um, the Spectra system has way more settings and way more things that you can do with it than the Instax wide. And for that, I do think it's pretty cool. They also made autofocus cameras. Um, I think there are a lot of really cool features that Polaroid created that we lost and sadly because the impossible film isn't very good I don't get to use those features anymore. Oh, I never really thought about it like that. Maybe some other party like someone else could come out with an instant film for Polaroid cameras but uh, yeah until then I'm probably going to be sticking to Instax um, over let's say Spectra or 600 series impossible project film. That being said, I do think there's a time and place for everything. So if you are trying to have like that very, you know, retro look instantly out of the camera, I would say that, yeah, maybe Polaroid 600s from 30 years ago look like the Impossible Project film that's coming out of the camera now. Mm, I don't know about that, Derek. If you're going for that look, yeah, there's a time and a place. And, uh, you know, make sure you scan it the day you take it. I agree. But I've shot enough of this film now that I can say that I really don't like it. Um, I kind of want to do like a follow-up video. Let me know in the comments if you guys think that's a good idea. I was going to show some of the Impossible film that I've shot over the last couple years. Some that I like and some that I just am really not happy with. And then I was going to show some of the Instax film that I've shot and how it kind of all has this consistent look. And I can show you photos that I took, you know, a month ago and then photos I took four or five years ago. 
Uh, let us know in the comments if that's something you think would be cool. Otherwise, I'm gonna throw it back to Joey for the outro uh, this way. <laughs> All right, guys, so what did you think out there? Um, thoughts on either film, either way? Um, which one would you shoot with in the future? Some pros and cons of each. Uh, leave those in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts. And as always, subscribe to our channel. We love it when you do that and give us a little thumbs up on this video. Uh, this video was edited by Derek. I thought it came out pretty great. I've already seen the cut of the shooting part. Uh, I'm digging it and I hope you are too. Uh, we're trying real hard to get these videos uh, tip top for you and you and you. All right, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time. That looks so cool.